community of Coronado for 120 years. For those that are visiting, we are grateful to the Lord that you are participating in this Eucharist in a small portion of the Lord's vineyard. As a courtesy, please remember to turn off and silence your electronic devices so that today's liturgy will not be disturbed. We'd like to say thank you to our advertisers who help pay for our bulletin. When you patronize their businesses, please be sure to let them know that you saw their ad in our parish bulletin and thank them for the support. The Youth Adult Ministry will be hosting a barbecue on the front lawn of the Ministry Center next Sunday, August 12th, from 5 to 8 p.m. The barbecue will be provided by the youth, uh, the Young Adult Ministry. However, you are asked to please bring a side dish or a dessert to share. Come enjoy each other's company and meet other parishioners. We are in need of a volunteer coordinator and volunteers for our coffee and donuts program on Sunday mornings. Parishioners or parish groups that would be interested in volunteering are invited to contact the parish office. Now for our liturgy. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in ordinary time. Our presider is Father Gentile. Let us stand and sing together our opening hymn, which you will find in your blue hymnals, number 925, All Who Hunger. That's 925.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
brothers and sisters. I declare and testify to the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O oh Lord. Is there a doctor perhaps that could we have a parishioner in distress here? Any doctors here? When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to him, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you. What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So I'll say some things. What's that? Well, I think I'll go over and, and bless her. Just hold on a second.
Well, she's talking, she's awake, and we're waiting for the ambulance. And that's her brother who is here with her. So let me say a few words, if that's okay. So when I was a kid, one of the things that we did every Sunday after the nine o'clock mass, which was the mass for the children and families, was we'd go to home bakery and get a bag of buns. We call them buns, so they still call them that. And uh, so you'd get a whole bag, you know, you get two cheese, buns and two crullers and two crumb buns and get a whole bag, you know, for like a dollar or a couple of dollars or whatever. So I always associated mass with buns, with these sweet buns that were fresh and delicious, you know. So the, that association between good food and good food, another kind of food here that we celebrate is such an important one. And the, in the ways that which uh, God feeds us. So how many times do we, do we get together and we, we express our fellowship, our, uh, our brotherhood, our sisterhood by eating together, eating a meal? Well, so that's what we're doing here. We express our fellowship. We express the uh, the fact that God is good and that God feeds us. He feeds us on the body and blood of his son. He feeds us on the word. We say that Jesus is God's word and uh, he is, uh, God is good to us. So uh, we'll let this gentleman do their work, I guess. Let's see how things are progressing. So, um, Where was I? Um, <laughs> let's see, God's feeding us. Yeah, that's a good thing. So in the Old Testament, God fed, you know, the people are grumbling against God. They're all mad at Moses and Aaron. You've taken us in the desert. What's the matter with you? We'd rather have stayed there. You know, the old phrase, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. So they knew what it was like to live in Egypt, even being slaves. Now you've taken us here and oh my goodness, we, we hate you. You know, are your kids sometimes so they're mad at you? We hate, I hate you. So they, I hate you, Moses. I hate you, Aaron. So God says, God is very patient with them. And he says, I will send something from heaven. And it's the manna. So he says, I'll now rain down bread from heaven. And uh, I've heard their grumbling in the morning. They shall have fill of bread and the quail and all of that. And they don't know what they're dealing with, of course. So it says... Uh, that at the end Moses says, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Well, they don't know what we know, right? So the bread that God has given them to eat is not just the manna and the quail, but is his word, is his law that he gave them through Moses, the Ten Commandments. But in the, fulfill in the fulfillment of the New Testament, the bread that he gives us from heaven is Jesus, right? So that's what, this is, this is the prefiguring, and that's what the people in the gospel today, they had just been fed. Remember next week, uh, last week, we had the uh, multiplication of the loaves and fishes. So they know Jesus. He, he can give us some good food, bread and fish. So they're following him and seeing if uh, he can continue to do this for them. But they don't know the fullness of it, you know? And uh, we don't hear, uh, hear it today, but over the weeks and the rest of August, we're going to hear about, uh, we're going to hear about this bread, this, we'll hear this bread of life discourse. And uh, it's very shocking to the people. They can't tolerate uh, it. And a lot of them leave Jesus, but let's, we'll save that for another day. So let's pray for our sister Rosemary. Rosemary, we're praying for you. Please know that. Okay, God, God's peace be with you. All right. Why don't we stand and let us profess our faith.
for a renewal of the church created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the Holy Land and everywhere people are torn by conflict and division, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who hunger and thirst but are never satisfied, that they might come to know Jesus, the bread of life for the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dennis Farrell, Mary Miller, and our parishioner friend, Rosemary, as well, and the protection of those who serve our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Elizabeth Neistel, Sergio Galvadon, Mario Carrillo, and all who have died, that having shared the bread of life among us, they may now share in his heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. While the gifts on the altar are being prepared, let us sing number 770, One Lord. That's 770. Mm -hmm.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John, his auxiliary, all clergy, religious, and your entire people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now using the words of the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us sing number 935, Draw Near. That's 935.
Let us pray. O Lord, accompany with constant protection those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us keep uh, Rosemary in our prayers, and thank you to those of you who assisted. Uh, very much appreciated. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us end this celebration by singing number 610. Sing of the Lord's goodness. That's 610. Verses 1, 2, and 4.